Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we will be talking about a very, very significant winter storm. Um, this one is probably the most impactful one of the season so far. While yes, the Nor'easter was definitely a contender, you know, the one that just occurred across the Northeast uh, over this past weekend. The fact is that this one will have an equally snowy, impactful side, but in addition, we have the ice threat, which the Nor'easter didn't have. We have a rain threat, which the Nor'easter didn't have. So we have uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of potential for um, some damaging impacts from this system, uh, from the crippling ice, heavy rain, potentially some uh, flooding rains, and of course, just the incredible amount of snow that could be falling with the system across very large cities. So, so I will be going over that. I, I will be going into the details of, you know, <clears throat> which, uh, I guess, forecast model probably has a better handle of it, what have the trends been, the updates to the system, whether or not it's a more northern track or southern track. You've been probably hearing about a lot about that if you're a city that's uh, right on the cusp of seeing heavier or lighter snow. And we have a lot more clear details now with the most recent forecast. So before I get into that, I do want to say that if you guys are new to this channel, you know, consider checking out, um, obviously, watch the video, check out the other videos, see if you enjoy them. And if you do, um, consider subscribing and liking. Um, obviously, I, I may sound like a, you know, like I'm trying to advertise this, and to an extent I am, but I always forget at the end of the video to do that when it's more appropriate to do. So I just say it now. But again, if you just want to watch, thank you for watching. Um, by the way, if you have any comments, right, if you want to know kind of some details, I'll do my best to answer your comment. Uh, so leave that down below about your city or, or location about snowfall and whatever. So let's go back and let's start off by looking at the <clears throat> GFS model. So again, this system, if you're wondering where, when, how will it occur? So this will start occurring tomorrow in the evening. It will start off as a light band of rain. And let me demonstrate that to you using the GFS model, which I think has a pretty good handle of the system. Though, again, I think overall the best one uh, is the European, but I'll show you that one as well. Um, which is why this video is a bit longer because of how much stuff we have to cover. I can't just squeeze it all into a short video. But look, this is what it starts off uh, as tomorrow. You may be like, that, that, that's it? That's a little storm? And yeah, I mean, you know, all big things have a small uh, small start, at least most do. And you can see that thing right there <clears throat> is definitely a meager-looking uh, cold front that is attached to this low pressure. This thing will be uh, the result of um, a lot of um, warm air getting uh, driven up towards the north because of how far north the system is. There are some winter storm watches, winter storm warnings, by the way, issued for some um, blizzard conditions across the north uh, North Dakota area <coughs> and eastern, or sorry, in western Minnesota. And do note also just a vast expanse of winter storm watches that have been issued anywhere from Texas, uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, right, Kentucky, Tennessee, into maybe even Iowa, Illinois, uh, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, and up into Canada. And those are watches, and of course, the warnings are going to be upgraded. So, yes, a vast, vast expanse. Okay, now notice that this system tomorrow, 12 p.m., it's raining lightly across areas that could be seeing two feet snow plus. So, don't get caught off guard by that if you're north of St. Louis and you're seeing rain tomorrow. Do note on the northern side of this thing, there's going to be snow, and that will start uh, falling heavily tomorrow by mid evening, 6 p.m. It is snowing heavily. By late evening, pretty much uh, during the overnight hours, this thing explodes. You can see that now there's an ice threat into, uh, say, central uh, Missouri, into, um, <clears throat> let's say, well, Jefferson, around the level of Jefferson, uh, Springfield, Missouri, there could be some rain and ice mixing in, so that's definitely a danger. Notice that further north, it's more of a clean rain to snow line across Michigan, Indiana. Kansas gets in on some of that snowfall. Oklahoma gets in on that rainfall at first. Again, don't get caught off guard if you're in northern Indiana and you're seeing rain as late as tomorrow, late at night. This will start off as <clears throat> a rain events and then transition over to snow as this frontal boundary sags to the south. So notice that the northern extent of this does reach into cities potentially like Des Moines maybe even to uh, areas like Omaha but it's much lighter and the heaviest amounts are occurring at this point where again it started off as rain this is 6 a.m. Wednesday so at this point you could assume that the commute is going to be treacherous there are already several inches of snow on the ground it's falling very heavily and by noon this thing is a full-fledged uh, snowstorm we have a warm front, or sorry, we have a warm side to this with rain that is starting to um, show itself. Again, not its full potential yet. We do have a decent ice threat, and we have Kansas, uh, Colorado, New Mexico, even the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma, all under a snow and ice. Okay, now notice <clears throat> that this thing sags to the south. 
right there in this timeline right there so cities like chicago uh omaha if you were seeing snow you're kind of out of that now even st louis now starting to get into the lighter amounts lighter rates and this is where there could be a brief lull as they call it of precipitation still heavily snowing across southern canada toronto montreal quebec into northeastern uh, ohio potentially still raining across um sorry northwestern ohio still raining across northeastern ohio indianapolis potentially getting in on that uh, snowfall as early as early afternoon on wednesday but notice, that's just the first wave. As this first wave kind of weakens, we see a deepening low pressure here. We see a lot of ice potentially just east or just north and west of uh, Dallas. And much of northern central Texas is under a pretty good ice threat. Um, the panhandles, again, of Oklahoma, Texas, and northern central Texas is still under, um, or I guess northern western Texas is under uh, mainly snow. But notice this thing advances. So now cities like Dallas are potentially dealing with decent amounts of ice. We do have a main, mainly a rain threat for Louisiana, Southern Arkansas, Little Rock finally gets in on some rain or uh, ice, right? Uh, notice Louisville, ice, Ohio, ice, Indiana, or uh, Southern uh, Indiana, Southern Ohio, ice. Further north, it's obviously uh, snowing. Now, notice that uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, you know, some cities and uh, states further up north are also seeing that snow. But now look, we start seeing um, certain areas like, say, Indiana Plus that were letting up on a snowfall rates late, late Wednesday pick up in intensity again. You can see the system resurges and this rain snow line and, and the ice line does sag gradually to the south and east but it doesn't affect everyone you could see that for example tupelo mississippi you're just mainly in the rain uh, uh, rain uh, zone uh, you know houston texas you're also just mainly dealing with the rain but notice that this eventually does sag towards the south uh, north and east south and east kind of the snow moves to the north and east <clears throat> and with that we see the, the snow move into places that saw that very legendary nor'easter and you could see that we see potentially ice across new york city into portions of um the delmarva maryland west virginia kentucky and then this thing finally drags out of here by late um or sorry by midday saturday so yes this thing starts tomorrow it's gone by saturday so a multi multi day event and it, notice in terms of total snowfall accumulations this thing, according to the GFS, which again, I just use the GFS to show you the general timing. Now let's get into kind of the snowfall ranges. So you can see the GFS <clears throat> is uh, has trended towards the south. So if you remember yesterday, the GFS was a northern scenario. Now it's the southern scenario because the Canadian has trended slightly towards the north or really just maintained its position. And the European has also maintained its uh, firm ground, meaning that the European probably had the best handle on track uh, when it came to it, when, when it came down to it in the first place. But I... <clears throat> did say that yesterday that the european probably had the best handle on track but uh, the gfs and canadian had a better handle on the structure of the snow now a lot of this snow <clears throat> you could see into kentucky right, with that uh, foot in the you know foot plus that's not going to be accurate because that is actually going to be falling this ice and this includes sleet so that's it's not going to be <clears throat> as uh as significant and but anywhere in illinois indiana ohio you can see those uh, snowfall amounts are actually very significant and honestly let me just show you on this website the gfs model because i think th i think this one doesn't include the ice um so it makes a snowfall map a uh, graphic a lot <clears throat> a lot more accurate and let's focus on that 10 to 1 ratio for now as a lot of that snow will be heavier and yes you could see that you know louisville may still get on some decent snow but there's a sharp cutoff um, and you could see that Texas also maybe up 8, 9, 10 inches. Uh, Oklahoma City, or, or maybe up towards a foot in some areas. St. Louis, potentially up to a foot, if not more. Indianapolis, uh, you know, uh, just north, especially up to uh, up to two feet of snow, definitely possible. Ohio, notice 18, 19 inches. Pennsylvania, uh, anywhere through the northeast around a, a foot. And into Boston, we have uh, around uh, 19 inches, according to the GFS. This one was the noon model run. And now the evening model run, you can see relatively the same. Not much has changed. Um, just maybe some lighter amounts for the northeast but um you know if you live across say southwestern michigan right there southeastern michigan i should say near uh, ohio border toledo indianapolis um central illinois this is a snowstorm of probably the decade if you know it occurs around every five to six years so if you you know if you're not satisfied with 19 inches and you want a bigger storm Probably won't happen for the next five to six years. These things happen rarely at such a large, um, a large scale and uh, at such heavy rates and longevity in terms of its uh, precip rate or its precipitation timing. So uh, that's the snowfall from the uh, the, Can uh, the GFS model. Let's take a look at the Canadian. If you recall, I did think this model uh, had a pretty good handle, and you can see it actually shows a bit more snow further north, say to the areas like Chicago, more of uh, the mitten or the thumb of Michigan, right there, seeing some higher amounts. But generally 
those amounts are still rather significant. You could see um, they're actually on the lower side of the snowfall. And um, you could see that the Cuchero would probably do a bit more justice on a Canadian because the National Weather Service is calling for many areas here over two feet. So I'll show you the National Weather Service graphing in just a second. But do note that this one, the main, main difference is the Canadian shows a lot more snow into southern uh, Canada. And so, you know, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, Quebec, you see a lot more snow from a scenario like the Canadian versus the GFS. Boston doesn't pick up a lot of snow from this scenario. And you, you, just to show you a comparison one more time, this is what the GFS showed. Notice that snow swath is much further towards the south. So that could be detrimental for areas like, you know, even Erie, Pennsylvania, right on a cusp right there with the Canadian model. Um, Pittsburgh pretty much seeing nothing out of that. Um, so uh, as I push this forward, I want to show you now the European model. So this is another very good model. I think it has the best handle out of all the models on this system. <laughs> And uh, this is basically, again, the storm tracks. Notice that portions of Missouri into <coughs> Illinois, Indiana, what we do see are those very, again, similar heavy amounts, assuming a 10 to 1 ratio. So some of these are on the lower end. They will be a bit higher in reality. So again, I think a lot of these areas right here where I'm showing my cursor, extending into Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and maybe portions of Missouri, two feet, 24 inches, maybe even plus is possible, if not uh, likely. And then it, the amounts may diminish a bit uh, as you go towards the north and east. But again, uh, you can see the European does show some decent snow for Toronto and the cities more into southeastern um, uh, Canada versus the GFS that shows a lot more snow into the northeast. So if you're, you know, if you're living in New York, if you live in Boston, if you live in Connecticut, Rhode Island, and you're wondering what I think will happen, I think a scenario like what the European shows is probably the most accurate as it has been the most accurate so far with its track. And there's no signs that the GFS has a better handling of it, which, again, just to remind you, the GFS showed more snow into the southern area. So let me just play out the, the, the Canadian and the GFS or any European now to show you exactly how the systems <clears throat> evolved, not just to show you their snowfall accumulations, even though, again, you saw that most of the models at this point are in general agreement on that track, other than the GFS, which has been a bit loppy. Notice, again, it breaks out tomorrow. That's heavy snow, very heavy snow, very heavy rain into southern Missouri at first. Again, this thing's progressive. It shifts towards the south and east eventually. Um, again, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, Again, you can see by Thursday or late Wednesday, it's it's snowing. It's been snowing for a while. It's probably even up to a foot of snow at that point. Notice you get a resurgence of heavy precip moisture. The ice getting potentially all the way into, again, Dallas, Little Rock, um, Louisville, uh, south of uh, Indianapolis, southern, uh, southern Indiana. Again, Columbus, you're right on that cusp where you, you will start off with pretty heavy rain followed by quite a bit of ice and then maybe a little bit of snow. Same thing with a lot of the cities across the northeast. Rain, maybe a little bit of snow and ice. Ice, but <clears throat> the very strong winds from the uh, the, the north uh, north and east will pretty much wipe out that snow, and before the cold air arrives, a lot of that precip is is gone. So again, I showed you the total snowfall from the European. I'm just showing you how they how they evolve now. <clears throat> and notice that uh, the Canadian actually shows, again, a very similar track, very similar setup to the European. Um, keeps it a bit more focused, that heavy line of snow. Shows a bit more ice than what the European shows and a bit more further towards the south and east. So you could see that affects more of Mississippi, for example. And then do note that this thing, again, also quickly uh, scatters out of here. Now, let me start showing you some of these ice accumulations. I, I believe that the long-range models on this website do not show... Okay, this one does. It shows it's freezing rain, the Canadian. And again, some of these are a bit higher than what probably will occur in reality, but... You know, some of these could be uh, resembling where this kind of falls, this ice, if you're under this right now, these uh, colors, get ready for some ice. How much? It's tough to say, but, you know, I wouldn't expect for there to be two to three inches of ice, though there could be in areas up to an inch, inch and a half, which is crippling either way you look at it. And you can see this is a pretty likely scenario of what may occur. You could see a lot of Texas is covered in some of that nasty ice. Uh, let's take a glance at the European model. I do not know if this one has a feature like that. Yeah, it doesn't. Let's see if the GFS has a freezing ice feature. But again, I don't believe that the GFS has an accurate track. And uh, it does have a freezing rain forecast, but notice that even if the tracks are different, wherever the ice does occur, they show it's significant. So again, uh, but I do think that the European has the best handle on it. It's just a bummer it doesn't show its ice forecast. But we can look at some high-res models, like the NAM, okay? And I think the NAM has a decent handle, though I think it's a bit further towards the, the south than what will actually occur. But you can see where, um, a lot of these areas right here 
picking up potentially, you know, devastating amounts of ice if that were to occur. That would be very, very significant and concerning. RDPS Canadian, you could see a slightly different orientation. It takes a lot of this through the large cities in Ohio, for example. That could be very bad. Hopefully that doesn't occur, but it's a possibility. But you could see that the ice, it's just a few uh, kind of miles over this and that way. It's The models are generally in a, an agreement that will be affecting kind of the lower Ohio Valley up through maybe even into Erie, according to the Canadian. So again, it may not all be a, a snow threat for everyone. But let me show you now, you know, because I have a lot of cities and areas to kind of cover. Let me show you what the National Weather Service thinks will be occurring, their predicted snowfall. And let me show you this, as this is rather <laughs> ridiculous. And notice that out to 78 hours, these amounts still don't calculate in that snowfall uh, fully because this is early Friday, and as you remember, the system's pulling out of here Saturday. So it's it's still snowing across these locations right here, though you could see some 20-inch amounts, a lot of 17, 16. Um, it, later mounts towards the south and west, still decent though for how far south this is, 4 to 6, you know, I think some of these amounts will be uh, bumped up a bit, I think they'll be higher. And again, this doesn't include an ice threat, but you know, St. Louis, just north of you, the heaviest amounts. Indianapolis, again, just north of you, the highest amounts, according to the National Weather Service. Tough forecast. Detroit, really getting the axis of that heaviest. This could still shift a bit further south or north. I'm thinking right now that the, probably a bit further towards the south, if anything, based off some of the, uh, what the models are showing. So you can see <clears throat> this thing. Either way, wherever the system goes in terms of that exact snowfall, it could affect your area. But as a, as a whole for this video, you know, this thing's a legendary event either way you put it. And you can see that Erie, you know, getting in on its snowfall eventually. But again, only goes out to 78 hours. So... A bit, a bit hard to tell exactly how much snow will fall there as it's, it's a bit further out than areas like Illinois, Indiana. Let me show you the EPS. So these are just ensembles again. What I was showing you yesterday, if you weren't, uh, if you weren't here for yesterday's video, it's basically a bunch of models combined, 51 in this case, <clears throat> and they all have different scenarios, just like the individual models I showed you. But in this case, they're all average to show us one image, and we could take a look at. Or I guess they're averaged uh, what they all think will be falling in terms of snow. Again, this probably is not what's exactly going to occur, but it's an averaged look. So it's a pretty good possibility of what may occur or what's the current thinking. And it's very useful <clears throat> when predicting or looking at trends. So this was yesterday's. And notice, yesterday's at noon is pretty similar to today's. So what we do know is that the confidence is relatively high. There have been a few changes. Again, mainly just uh, uh, a few changes um, for local areas. I wouldn't say that there has been a trend in either direction with the European models. However, let me show you the uh, G. EFS, so the GFS ensembles, and if this one you'll see a clear trend towards the south. If you recall, it was a more northern scenario yesterday when I was recording this video. This is what it showed yesterday. So again, take a look at that, right? And this is what it shows today. You could see it went from being the most northern model to the most southern model. It shows snow now into um, still across Illinois, Indiana, just leaving a lot of Detroit behind with lighter amounts, Chicago, Kansas City. Point St. Louis in the heaviest amounts, and it also shows Erie, you know, upstate New York with a lot of uh, heavy snow, Boston, Vermont, uh, seeing a lot of heavy snow, which again, I don't think this is a likely scenario. I think that the European and the Canadian have a much better handle on this <clears throat> situation. But again, for your official local information, right, uh, you know, I won't be able to provide exact details. Click on your National Weather Service. So go to weather.gov and you'll see this map and just click on your area. So if you live in Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania, you click on your area and it shows you your kind of the office and you can see Pittsburgh is not expected to see a major event out of this in terms of snow at least or winter weather but right there sandusky cleveland let's let's take a glance at cleveland you're under winter storm watch for now again it's just a watch for now but you can see thursday heavy snow predicted and uh, which is 33 to 7 1 to 3 probably some more for, right thursday night so again a 6 to 12 inch event very possible do note that where that heaviest snow may occur there is that winter storm warning and some of these areas uh, you know could be absolutely off the charts in terms of um, what you've seen in recent history. This is their uh, uh, predicted snowfall through Thursday morning. Again, um, I, I don't think this, yeah, this is just from round one. This is not the round two. Round two, this is what round two could produce. So you could see, you know, say you live in Peru, Rochester, you could add pretty much another six inches on top of your amounts, which would leave a lot of areas close to 20 inches. Um, and notice that Chicago, for example, you're right on the cusp of heavier and later snow, uh, northern uh, Ohio, Indiana. So we have a lot of um, a lot of still areas that are, you know, right on the cusp, if you will. Kansas City, again, you're right on that 
right on the cusp. Uh, you're you're under a winter storm watch right now, and it does call for you know a significant event. Except again, you could always change, and you could always end up on that six side or that 14 side it's a large range because there's a lot you know not a lot of confidence in exactly the, the, the exact precise storm track or uh, the gradient the cutoff gradient but notice that it does stretch into southern canada as well so that's uh, a, a big concern too for uh, for the large cities that are <clears throat> situated across southern canada now again um, i could take a look at some of the high res models now with you these are basically models that don't go out um far but for the hours that they do go out for, they're a little bit more precise than what the, what the global models are showing. Notice it does a very good job of showing that rain, and it's going to look like a spring storm. You know, 6 p.m., it's raining across many of these locations, but look, as this progresses, 7, 8, 9, we see a lot of snow starting to spread across Indiana, Illinois. It reaches areas like Chicago by midnight, potentially even earlier. Michigan, Kansas City, you're right, uh, southern Michigan, I should say, northern Missouri, Kansas City included, uh, southern Iowa getting in on its snow or late at night and notice this thing kind of uh, trends uh, towards the south we see a lot of heavy rain some ice right there across missouri just south of st louis and this thing is pounding several inches of snow per hour potentially into illinois michigan uh indiana back into kansas it starts filling out again it's a quickly developing system once it starts that cold front it's it's very quick let me speed this up for you and look Boom, with, you know, a few a few images right there. It just explodes into a beast. Total snowfall just through 48 hours. So, uh, Wednesday afternoon, heavy amounts, guys. These are heavy amounts of snow in such a short amount of time for Illinois, northern Indiana, and even back into across Kansas. Three inches, Detroit, several inches, all the way into Toronto and into the portions of southern Canada. Now, that's just one high-res. Again, this one does change all the time. The, you know, the, the overall tiny images, not not the big track. It, will, it might deviate a bit. But, um, you know, there won't be any massive changes, I assume. You can see the NAM with its time frame pretty similar to what the HER model is actually showing, which is good. That means there's decent confidence. And notice that, again, it does overperform here. That won't be me. That won't be snow. That'll be mainly ice. But in that green right there, across Indiana, Ohio, a lot of that snow is going to be significant, and this is, shows it through that entire event. Um, let's take a look at the RGM at Canadian high res. Notice some differences. It shows uh, again. It doesn't include that snow. Uh, that snow to the south because there won't be snow there. It'll be ice. So again, I think this one also just has a better handle in terms of track potentially. But um, yeah, you can see it's much cleaner image of where that heaviest snow will fall. And it's not completely done for the Northeast at this current time as this is Friday morning, um, meaning like 12 a.m. So you could see that it's still going on pretty intentionally. And look at all that the heavy rain, potentially severe weather across Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. Look at that, those lines of heavy red. Either heavy heavy rain, some thunderstorms, maybe even some lake effect off the Lake Michigan area. Definitely something to watch for. So a legendary event, <laughs> a very significant event. And, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, for the last few days, we've been tracking where this may go, where this um, may trend. And again, the European probably has the best handle. So if you're looking at a certain model, I think the European is the best one to look at. Um, and I think the other models did do a decent job, especially the GFS and Canadian in terms of the structure of the storm. But at this point, for the fine details, it's the high-res models. And of course, stay tuned to your local National Weather Service as this thing is a uh, is a beast, is a monster, and will be making history for at least portions of the, for the area. And you can see that uh, they have, uh, in some areas, those red colors which is indicating 18 to 24 inches of snow, which is absolutely historic for these areas. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe. See ya. Bye.